Hello and welcome to your next video in this series of videos to teach you about how to write a term paper. This one is actually about writing, so hooray! We finally reached some writing in, in this series, and we're going to talk about writing introductions and conclusions, but also the thesis, the kind of most important part of your introduction or your conclusion. We're going to start with talking about introductions, then the thesis, then conclusions. I'm sorry if that was redundant. So how do we start an introduction? Well, some people find introductions the hardest, and that might be because we're always trying to find a sort of hook that will raise the interest of the readers and, and draws them into our topic, but also gives a little bit of context and basically tells the reader why they should be interested in what we have to say. Right, because at the very beginning, we are trying to convince the reader to care. When the reader sees our title, that means they've we've already maybe roped them in because they're now reading the beginning. The social contract has begun, but the hook has to be good enough that they don't immediately rip up our paper, throw it in the wastebasket, and move on. That hook usually can find itself expressed as a quotation, uh, perhaps as a discussion of relevant world events that relate to the context of your argument. It could talk about an interview with the author where certain points are, are raised. There's all kinds of different ways to make a hook. Basically, a hook is going to be something that is a little bit unexpected. It's not going to be jumping straight into the theory. But the hook will most probably lead into your thesis. It does this by creating context. The hook demonstrates that there is a need for some kind of argument. And that argument would be that thesis that you're talking about. What does it actually mean to hook the reader, though? Well, first... The title serves to do that. The title should be interesting. But then we want to keep the reader, basically. We want to have our introduction be so interesting that the reader will read on. So what we have to do is we have to create uh, this hook, something interesting, something relevant, and we have to convince the reader that they should care. I know that for a lot of writers, they start writing and they know they have to start with the hook and they just... They, their their brains go blank and they give up. Uh, you never have to start with writing the introduction when you write a term paper. So if you want, you can just write hook in brackets, put two X's and you can come back to it later. A hook usually is something, though, that breaks us up from the academic context, but brings us into it as well. That's what our introduction's main goal is. The person who's reading the paper might be in an academic context already, but we have to shift them into the specific academic context where this paper matters. So usually we are bringing them through, uh, maybe we introduce them to the text a little bit, we're giving them an idea of why it might matter in the world, and setting up the stakes of our argument, setting up why we're writing a term paper in the first place. Sometimes that means introducing the text, as you said, sometimes it means introducing the author, and sometimes it might also mean that we already introduce some of our main concerns. We can't really give a definite answer to that because it'll depend on what your term paper will be about. But in general, the hook should then lead on to your thesis. Usually around the end of the first paragraph, you're going to see the thesis as the final sentence. This is not a given, and we recommend that you look at articles that have been used in this course. Look at their introductions and read them. If they're interesting, maybe you should copy something they did. If they're flat boring, maybe you should ignore them. So you've written your thesis and maybe added a couple of research questions. How do you then proceed with the introduction? Well, uh, most often you will probably give a sort of short description of your methodology, what kind of theory you're using, how you're going to proceed, what are you going to do first, what are you going to do de then, and what do you hope to achieve with that? And then you might also want to explain why you chose the text that you chose. Usually we wind up talking about these kinds of things at the very end of the introduction, and there can be stuff in between. Sometimes we talk about the role literature has in the world for shaping knowledge and, and so on. Sometimes we don't. With your term papers, we recommend sticking to what we've just laid up here because that's already about a page. And that's your first 10%. So that key part, the key sentence, I guess, of an introduction is called the thesis. What is the thesis and what does it do? Well, basically, your thesis will condense your argument. 
you will want to write a thesis that, that gives a bit of a summary and helps the reader to understand what's going on in your term paper. At the end, usually the thesis should be proven by your paper. Of course, there are some negative papers out there, right? A, they have a negative conclusion, the thesis fails, but that is extremely rare in literary studies. We would generally suggest that you abide by the tried and true method of using a proven thesis. Usually our journey allows us to prove a thesis, even if it's not the one we set out to solve to begin with. But then what Lucas said earlier comes in, you don't have to start by writing your introduction. You may start with your main part and then you already know what kind of thesis is justified by a term paper. The thesis is supposed to be so condensed because it gives a reader the idea of the major component of the whole paper. And it also makes it really easy for when you are doing research to look at the thesis and say, oh, what is this paper about? This is why we often read the introduction or abstract, because the abstract and the introduction usually both include the thesis. But you should be careful and not put the thesis on its own. It should still be part of your introduction and of a certain paragraph. It doesn't have to be a single sentence that stands on its own. Uh, so you still want to have it incorporated into your main text. And you might even want to elaborate on your thesis statement by adding a couple of research questions. What do you want to find out? What's the, the main focus of your term paper? What are the kinds of questions that you're asking yourself? That brings us to, well, the second half of this, I guess, which is conclusions. How do we conclude a paper? It seems like it would be way different than an introduction, but they're actually pretty similar. They're just kind of like a backwards version of an introduction. And I think that's maybe the reason a lot of scholars find the conclusion just as difficult as the introduction. The main part quite often is something that you just write, and then introduction and conclusion, that's where you tie all your thoughts together, and that's what makes them so difficult. But worry not, we've got a couple of good tips for you. As Lucas said, introduction and conclusion are always linked. And so in the conclusion, you will want to explain the results that you have achieved throughout your paper and tie back into the introduction. Maybe tie back to uh, your previous words as to why the reader should care, but definitely tie it back to your thesis. Yeah, most often you really do restate your thesis, but with the positive outcome associated with it. From that point, I recommend that you ask yourself a question, so why do I care? After you finish that sentence and just answer that kind of rhetorical question to yourself. Uh, because when we do write a conclusion, we just want to build ourselves back towards a context that's a little bit away from the academic, or at least back towards the context we started with. And usually if the stakes are correct, we're able to do that. So if I say, well, why do we care that you've shown that there is a hybrid detective in the interpreter? You say, well, it's important because the hybridity shows that the detective, as a figure, can express certain specific postcolonial dot dot dot. And I say, well, why does that matter? If you answer that question, your conclusion is almost done. Now, when we say we want you to go away from the academic focus a little bit in the conclusion, that doesn't mean that you should revert to your own opinion that's not really what we mean by this. It's more that we want you to tie your findings into a broader context. Uh, for example, taking taking up the example of the hybrid detective again, uh, you might want to tie that into the question of real-life immigrants in a certain country because the hybrid de detective and the interpreter is herself a second-generation immigrant. So that that's a way of, of tying your conclusion to the real world without referring to yourself necessarily. We can also come to the broader academic context by signaling about how we believe that there needs to be further research uh, done, whether it's in the literary studies field or a different field, because it's very possible that your findings may have right some kind of effect on the broader field. Maybe you've proven something that requires some investigation from neuroscientists. If you make a call to action like that, that's a very effective way to sound the ending of your conclusion by pointing towards uh, future outcomes and future research that might be important and fruitful. This is also a good way of dealing with 
secondary literature or theoretical concepts or generally observations that you came up with during the writing process, but that you couldn't quite fit into your term paper. Maybe you read your primary literature and you found something very, very interesting, but it just doesn't quite fit with what we are arguing for this term paper. Now, that's that's something that you can absolutely mention here at this point where you identify uh, further areas of interest or, you know, something that could be interesting for future research. Well, I think that about wraps up our overall thoughts on introductions, theses, and conclusions. So I hope that you're ready for the next video because it's going to be about writing again. But this one is going to be about writing the main portion of the paper. Thank you and uh, bye-bye. Yes, thank you and bye.